everyone. Welcome to my weekly messages. I'm Jalela Starr. Today the topic is a higher perspective on December 21st, 2012. Now a lot of people want to know what that's going to be like. You know, it's the end of the Mayan calendar. It's supposed to be three days of darkness and ooh, all these things are supposed to happen, you know. So because I've gotten so many uh, requests for a perspective on that, I thought I'd go ahead and address it. In regards to the three days of darkness, which is like the biggest thing that people are saying, that's really where I want to focus today. There have been a lot of, you know, theories put out there by different people as to what it's going to be. And uh, some of those, you know, there were pieces in there I resonated with and some that I didn't. So I, you know, I put it out to, to the Nibiru and said, you know, what is it? Well, what's it going to be like? And um, they gave me an answer. And sometimes they give me an, an answer in two or three different ways. Maybe it's an article I'm supposed to read or a book I'm supposed to read. And then sometimes they'll give me a message, you know, in the dream state that kind of like is another piece of the puzzle. And then when I wake up, I have to figure out these pieces. In fact, I had a dream the other day and I woke up in the morning and, and it were, there were two things. And it was one about my daughter. Um... And it was, I knew it was one of those prophetic things because I was hearing and I was seeing something that was going to happen in the future. And it was that aha hit, that knowing that, you know, this is, this is what's going to be. The choices have been made already. So here's what's coming down the pike. And the other one is on a global event. And, and at the time, I didn't really understand what it meant. Uh, in fact, when I wrote the, the written part of today's message, um, I really still didn't get what that piece was because when I woke up in the morning I couldn't remember the details of what they had shown me or told me uh, but I remembered the feeling of it and the feeling was that everything is going to be okay everything is going to be fine um, but now I've since writing that message I put the pieces together the feeling that I got and this article that I wrote about last week by this man named Daniel and he talked about in there about the sun. So now I, I, I put together what the two pieces mean, and, and it kind of backs up. Uh, well, anyway, this is a Nibiru's perspective. Okay, so to know what 1221 is going to be like for from their perspective, you got to look at three things. Number one, you got to look at what the sun is doing. Number two, you have to factor in Nibiru's passing. And number three, you have to factor in uh, our planet, our solar system moving through this field of energy emanating from the galactic core, uh, it, it spreads out across the equatorial plane and it's, uh, and, and we move through it every 13 something thousand years as we go around the procession of the equinoxes. So, uh, let, let's take the first one. Science has now discovered, and if you go back and read the Daniel paper, and I put a link into in it to in in the written part of today's message, he talks about how science has now discovered that suns don't don't start out as um, you know the the older sun is not a red dwarf. They're thinking that's like a dead sun. That's actually a young sun, and that the 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 oldest stars are yellow white or white stars. And, uh, and the stars actually start out as black holes. So that's the beginning. Then they go to a red dwarf, and then they go to yellow, then they go to yellow, white, and then I guess to white. And they said it's just like heating up metal. Metal goes through stages. It starts out as black, it turns red, it glows red, and then it turns like to a blue-white, um, a yellow, a yellow, then a blue-white, or a white, and um, that's when it's, it's able to break. Well, they said the sun is no different. So our sun is heating up, and what causes the sun to heat up is space dust and debris. It, it, that's like stoking a fire with a gasoline or with, with wood. It causes it to combust. It's good. Okay, so right now they're noticing that we're going through a very dusty area of space. Well, you have to factor in what's causing that dust. Well, that you have to understand where Nibiru comes into play. Nibiru, as I've said in past messages, and, and I encourage you all to read the book, The Millennium Prophecy, because it explains it. It talks about Nibiru as a solar system, something the Nibiruans told me almost 20 years ago, but I had no way to verify it. Now there's a book that verifies it. And uh, it has, it's, it's like a star with its own little solar system. 
And when it comes through our area, um, it pushes uh, debris and, and dust from the asteroid belt towards Earth. And that's why the southern hemisphere is being pummeled with meteors and all kinds of, of things that are uh, occurring that are not being shared in mainstream media here in the United States. And so as it pushes closer, it's, we're not only getting the debris and the dust from the asteroid belt, but Nibiru itself collects all, it's like a vacuum cleaner, man. It just, or a magnet, it's like a Swiffer duster. It goes through the, you know, the galaxy and, and it just picks up all this space debris because it's like a big magnet. And so you get all of that as well coming toward Earth right now, which is causing the sun to have a lot more fuel to heat up. Okay, so the sun is about getting ready to go from yellow to yellow white, which is a quantum step. Now, um, the third thing is, like I said, the galactic superwave. Not only is our sun heating up because of debris being pushed ahead by this incoming uh, brown dwarf and its solar system, uh, it's we're also at the same time our solar system is crossing through this field of pro-evolutionary, very high-speed energy that emanates from the galactic core. As I said earlier, a black hole is the first step in a sun starting. So, and, and they said for years that black holes not only suck in matter, they emit matter too. So, if if the sun's rays help to evolve all life, then you know a black hole would emit energy, right? And so we're going through this field at the same time. So everything is going to speed up, which means as we cross it and our sun crosses it, everything, the combustion is going to speed up. This quantum leap is going to happen. And it's going to like, it's going to be like a quickening. You know, I think that's what the Bible's ascension was all about, the quickening. It's, it's, it's simply an astronomical event that occurs ever so often in the universe. So there's no magic in it, no mystery in it. It's just a, an astronomical event. So this is what will happen. Now, when exactly it is going to occur and to what extreme or extent it's going to occur really depends on what we've done. So far they said we have shifted the timeline. I don't know exactly when that happened. I think it was in the last week. I don't even know what the events were that caused it to shift. We'll figure that out several months down the road. But right now they're saying the, the timeline has shifted. Everything's going to be okay. When 1221 comes, you're going to experience it as another day. Now, what has been prophesied is that we're going to see three days of darkness because of a sunspot is actually a part where the sun has heated up to the point that it's blue-white and it appears to be cold or dark. Well, when the sun takes this next quantum step, it will appear to go cold because it's going to uh, this blue-white, this really hot, hot set uh, stage. And so it will appear to be dark. It doesn't have to be three days, though, because of all these other things that are happening, us shifting our timeline, us moving through this uh, galactic superwave. All these things are going to affect the time that the sun stays super hot like that and, and goes dark. So it could be that it, it's only a few hours or maybe a day. And it could happen when, when there's clouds, so we don't even see it happening. It could happen when, you know, the sun's on the other side of the earth. Uh, say United States, you know, it, it'll happen for us at night. So it'll only, it'll only appear to the people in the southern hemisphere. But they'll be under cloud cover, so they won't even notice that anything other than the sun seems to be really bright. It could be a non, almost a non-event, and we wake up the next day and go on. But what happens after that is going to be what's exceptional. So that's what they're telling us. It's going to be another day. We can still impact that. We still have, what, 18 days to impact how quick that shift occurs so that there are no mass panicking. There's no destruction of the systems we want to maintain. Uh, nothing of that going on. And uh, how we do that is through our emotional clearing. Imagine if everybody did a liver cleanse or they just did a colon cleanse and they cleared the emotional toxin, the, the physical toxins from their body. Well, then the emotion field has to dump its equivalent. Imagine clearing that all out of our bodies and our, and our, um, our collective emotional fields, which create the emotional field of the planet. Our planet would shift in frequency. It would move through this 
super wave even faster than before, we would experience less of a dramatic effect because we didn't need it. And it would just be another day. It's all up to us. The choice is ours. So that's it. Hope this helps. It's our perspective. Do what you want with it. Uh, do the research. I've put the links in there. And uh, I'm looking forward to it being a pretty easy ride. All right. Take care. Bye.